What's up, my friends? Welcome back. John Levesque here. Today, I am joined by a very special friend. I'm going to go ahead and just bring him in right away to the chat. What's up, my friend? Mariano, how you doing, man? Hey, John. How you doing, man? It's great seeing you. It's been a while. I mean, I know you've been transitioning from your Microsoft job to uh, DocuSign. By the way, congratulations. Uh, first time we get to talk about it. So, um, I, I'm really happy about this new uh, opportunity in your life and certainly, um, you know, I'm here to share my knowledge about DocuSign and what I've learned about it with uh, your community, your new community, by the way. I love it. I love it. So Mariano is a Microsoft MVP. He's also a DocuSign customer and uh, he works for a company, McCorma Inc. And uh, they're a great group. He, he has always had amazing things to say about them. And, uh, and Mariano has been on the channel before, actually helped me make one of my most popular videos when UI flows, now known as desktop flows, came out in Power Automate. He was the first one to break that as new tech with me on the channel. And so, man, it's yep. really great to have you back. And I'm super stoked to have you back here talking about the new stuff, talking about DocuSign. Yeah, I mean, this is a great opportunity. And again, a new outlet for me, something new for me, because I've actually never talked about uh, non Microsoft tech. So, you know, this would be super stoked. I'm really happy about this opportunity and let's get it going. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, why don't we jump in? Why don't you tell us about what it is we're going to cover today? And, uh, Go ahead. Perfect. So this is a DocuSign 101. So if you've never had any interaction whatsoever for with DocuSign, or if this is your first opportunity taking a look at this software, um, first of all, it's a cloud-based service. So I am really happy when I can interact with some of the latest technologies that are cloud-based. And um, it definitely helps you move your documents through a workflow where you can actually have other folks sign it and deliver it back to you, which is something we're gonna to cover today. So simple cool. scenario, I have a proposal that I've put together that I'm gonna to submit to you, John, and you're gonna sign that proposal and uh, we'll go through some of the capabilities that you have with the, um, with the cloud service and how you can get things done without having stuff loaded on your computer locally. So Sweet. I believe that's the best of both worlds and we'll just go from there. Awesome. All right, man. Well, let's go ahead and uh, pull up your screen and let's jump in and get started. I'm ready to see the demo. Yeah. So, you know, I am here at DocuSign.com. Uh, for those of you, you know, who haven't seen DocuSign.com, John did a fantastic intro in his first video um, on, on the platform. So go and check his channel. Uh, he'll have the links below where you can see uh, that sort of intro of the sites and the capabilities and the trials and all those things. So I'm not going to go and talk about that here because you have pretty good content about that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to point everyone to this login aspect here. So I, as a company um, administrator, I have an, an account already on DocuSign. As you can see, this is my Mariano at McCorma.com account. Yeah. I'll continue here. Uh, this stuff is actually saved for you. So if you have your browser set up to save your credentials, uh, it pretty much uh, is uh, click uh, through these different options. If not, just type in your user account, your password. Again, John, you provided instructions last time on how to do that. So I'm not going to go through here uh, or through that again. And then I'm going to click login. That's my password, which you're not seeing. Of course, we don't want you to get my password and get into the no. system. <laughs> but this brings me to my DocuSign surface, which is, um, you know, pretty much where I can start constructing all my my uh, my workflow. So let's give this a couple seconds. And uh, boom, you are you are actually uh, presented with sort of like a general summary and an opportunity to get started with um, with a new document. So the one thing I want to call your attention here is as you accumulate uh, documents throughout, you will have the ability to uh, have like a little dashboard that shows you what actions are required if you're waiting on others, uh, if your document is expiring soon or your envelope is expiring soon and all the envelopes that have been completed. And I'm actually using DocuSign terminology here because I know you guys call it envelopes. So yeah, the other thing yeah. here is I, I have a preview of my signature. 
And that's kind of like one of the first questions people start to have, like, how do I get my signature set up? Well, uh, that's the first thing I want to intro here. And I'm going to go to um, MG. This is where my profile account information is. And I can go to manage my profile. Okay, so this is going to open a separate uh, browser tab for me. And here in the profile, you have the ability to set up things like, um, you know, your name, your email address. And I notice here that, for example, I have a, an issue with my title. Well, I'm no longer the director of technology. I'm the CTO. So please congratulate me on that one. Congratulations. And, <laughs> yes, thank you. And you can set up your address and phone information. But particularly, I want to draw your attention here to signatures. So there's a couple things about signatures. You, if you already have one set up, you can edit it. Well, you can add a new signature. I'm just going to, you know, pretty much if you go through add or edit, you're going to end up at the same place. I just want to show you uh, what is presented here. There are a number of signatures that are uh, given to you by default. I think this basically is a collection of uh, standard fonts that are available through DocuSign, and it kind of scrambles, uh, probably using some AI technology, some of the different signature options that you have. And you also have the ability to also set up your initials. So because my name is Mariana Gomez, it automatically inherits the initials that um, were created for me. And it makes sure that it let me know that this is a, a DocuSign object. And here's my full signature as well. Now, these are predefined templates. So I, can, I could choose from any of these and go with the flow as presented. But you also have the option to draw your own signature. Okay, so I can use either a pen or a marker style signature option, and then just draw something here with my um, mouse cursor if I wanted to. Then I could come over here and draw my initials if I wanted to. Now, most people that I know at least would have some sort of digitized signature. So if you have actually a signature file, whether that's JPEG, GIF, PNG, BMP, pretty much any file uh, type or format that is a, an image format, except for TIFF maybe, you could actually then uh, upload that signature file here. All you got to do is click here, point to your signature file on your local drive, bring it in, end of the story. The key aspect here is just make sure it doesn't exceed 200 kilobytes. So you got to you know, be aware of that limitation. But you also can upload your initial uh, file as well. So that's uh, that's pretty much the history with signatures. Nothing too complicated or sophisticated. Just be aware that you can choose your own from a list of pre templates. You can draw your own, or you can upload your own. So you know, pretty I, uh, pretty good amount of uh, options here. It is. I I chose one because I tried to draw draw mine a few times with my mouse and it just looked terrible. So I just chose one of theirs. Yeah, so just a few tips here. Um, if you are going to, uh, you're right, John, it's very difficult to draw a signature using a mouse cursor, granted. If you're going to go down the route of uploading yours, I have some tips as well. You probably want to uh, take a piece of paper, draw that, uh, you know, your signature with a marker. I suggest you use a marker instead of a pen. And then you, you scan and upload that into a file where then you can load it into things like paint or some sort of uh, image editor where you can then size it accordingly nice. and get a uh, very nice image that you can upload into um, into the app itself. Great tip. Okay. Cool. So that's uh, that's uh, it for signatures. Okay. And I want to keep this basic. So I don't want to bore you with stamps and language and region, but know that you have the option to define those as your uh, part of your profile. Awesome. OK. So a lot of things also are driven by how administrators set up the environment for you. So like my company has an account with DocuSign where we have a number of users that shared uh, this corporate account. So now that your administrators can define things like uh, under the settings that drive particularly all your um, how documents and signatures are going to behave once you submit them off to a uh, third party. Mm. And we are going to jump pretty much into that pretty much. But I can do things like manage my plan and billing, et cetera. But I want to call your attention to here some of the sign and set some of the sign settings. Okay. Right. 
I can define how recipients interact with my um, with my documents. I can require a reason, for example, when a recipient declines to sign, I can allow recipients to sign on paper and turn this back via fax or whatever they want or re-upload. I can allow the senders to override sign on paper, allow recipients to sign on a mobile device. Those kind of things are available to me, but know that those behaviors are actually driven by the administrative settings that are uh, placed on the on the account overall. So if you see things behaving not quite the way you want, you probably want to address those with your administrator. Likewise, I can define things like my sending settings. So um, how certain behaviors here, when I'm going to enable formula fields. Oh, we got to do a video about that. That's pretty cool. You got to enable conditional fields, you know, these kind of things, signer attachment fields. So there are a number of, again, behaviors that are um, driven by the administrative settings that are set in, um, in, in my account. Things like legal disclosures, all those things are configurable here. Um, now, we could spend an entire video alone just talking about this, so I'm just going to stay away from this and go back to um, the previous screen. Okay, so back to my uh, DocuSign e-signature surface. Um, I told you, John, that we're going to uh, play with a proposal today that I'm going to send to you, and you are going to basically sign and return to me, okay? Yeah, yeah. So let's start this exercise. I already have a Word document over here, which I'm going to drag and drop into the surface. This is actually pretty cool because you can drag your documents out from your file explorer or any, um, or if you're on the Apple platform, I'm sure you can drag, for, you know, whatever mechanism yeah. that is provided to drag into, uh, into the browser as well. You can do that. Or you can click on start and select the document. I prefer this drag and drop stuff because it's really cool. Totally. So I'm just going to drop this document here. And as you can see, the cloud service now starts to upload that document and it will have it readily available in this other screen here where I can start working on it. So a couple things. People ask me all the time, how do I add attachments to my, let's say my proposal? Let's say I want to send this out with a master services agreement that the customer has signed before. Well, you can add and upload additional documents in um, as a, as you know attachments to this particular proposal that I'm sending. So if we already went through a design session and you have and we came up with a design document, I can add that as an attachment to this. Okay. Um, the other thing that I can do is I can use templates. So you can have a document like this one, and for example, our proposals typically are you know, anything between 12 and 15 pages most of the time, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we put a lot of detail and effort into it, so they come out to be just about that long. Okay. Um, but the good thing is, once you templatize a document, you can then apply that template, and then it will automatically set all the fields and what's not onto this. Now, again, that's like DocuSign 102, so we're going to yes. leave that for a separate occasion, but just know that you can have templates that you can apply to a specific document that you upload and it inherits all the properties and all the fields and everything that um, that you have already established in that template. I got a, I got a whole video planned coming up on templates, how to set up templates, how to use templates. That's, that's yeah. coming in this series. That's good because then the next thing that you can do here, and by the way, you have the ability to view this document. So if by any chance you felt like you feel like you uploaded the wrong one, you can always go back here on this uh, more options and replace the document. You know, you can bring it, bring it for, bring it forward with a new document if you want. You can download it, rename it, etc. I don't play much with these options because most of the time, that's why I like the drag and drop feature because I can see what I'm dragging and moving over. But if you feel like you drag the wrong thing, you can always replace it here. Nice. And here's the option to apply templates, by the way. So I wanted to call your attention to that as well. Nice. Now, the good thing here now is this section then clearly establishes uh, the options for me to then add the recipients to, to this uh, document. 
And I'm going to, if I remember correctly, your name is John Levex. I'm just messing with you, man. You're not going to do that. Oh, okay. And the next thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to add your email address. Note that automatically I get a drop down with emails that I've used in the past. So the platform stores that information for me. And if I have documents that I send repeatedly to other uh, uh, to, to certain individuals, those names are appear here and I can just choose from the list and it auto fills all the fields. Very nice. convenient. If you if you if you have uh, repeat offenders, <laughs> so I'm just gonna put uh, me at and if, if I don't if I remember correctly, that's John Levesque. No S, Levesque, silent S. The S is there, just not uh, pronounced. Yeah. No, 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 no. I I'm sorry, I confused you. You put the S in there. You just don't say the S when you say that. Yeah, word. it says John Levesque. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did I mess yeah, up? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's I'm all good. messed up. It's all good. All good. I like you. Same, same thing. So the one thing here, John, is um, you can determine then who needs to sign or mm -hmm. is it going to be an in-person signer? Or if that person is going to, that recipient is just going to receive a copy of that document. Okay. Or um, if I'm going to allow you to edit the document once you receive it or update the recipients. So I sort of determine certain behaviors that you inherit once you get this document. And those are allowed, um, those are the options here. But for now, we're going to keep it simple. You are the one who's going to sign this document, so you need to sign. Yep. Um, I can add more recipients. So let's say I'm going to confuse one of my colleagues here at McCorma, and I'm going to add Kim. So note that if I've sent information to several Kims in the past, here's my list of Kims. I'm okay. I can choose Kim from the list. Okay. But one thing we're going to do is we're going to have Kim get a copy of this. So that's how that's how you determine who received the document, who um, who can get a copy. And you can even customize if I want an access code. I can add an identity verification option for that person or I can add a private message that goes along with this um, with this recipient. Nice. Another question that uh, that I get often is, oh, but I have two or three people who really need to sign this document and they need to be in a certain order. Well, one of the coolest things that you guys have done is being able to set the, the signing order. So um, if I have more than one signer, all I got to do is uh, determine who the order and specify by simply overriding these numbers who is going to have what priority in signing, who goes first, who goes second, who goes third even, and um, and all the additional copies that go along. So Super again, simple. not yet yeah, very simple. Oh, another thing to note is you can actually just drag and drop these around. And then now in this case, that also allows you to set the sign and order without having to uh, mess around with just typing in stuff. I like typing. Some people like drag and drop. That depends on, on your preference really. Okay, cool. All right. So once I feel comfortable with this, I can then go ahead and um, scroll down a little bit and show you something else that's down here. I can also uh, message, uh, establish a message to all recipients. But there's a couple of things I can do in addition to that. I can have custom email and language for each recipient. So if I am addressing a CEO, maybe I want to set the language of this proposal in one way. If I if the CFO is getting a copy, maybe I can address the language to that specific person a different way. Mm -hmm. So now I can have individual messages customized for each one of these um, for each one of my recipients. But here I can have a general message. Most likely is something that you will want to uh, do if this proposal is going out to a group of people that you've talked to before. Right, you probably want to address it to everybody and have one consistent message. Yep. Then um, you just go ahead with with that. Now the the subject no different from any email subject you would enter in any um, in any document. By default, it, her, it, it inherits the document name, um, but I don't need the extension and I don't need that DocuSign uh, template option that was pl uh, placed there on the subject for me. 
Yep. So I'll go, I'm going to keep it simple, but see, I already got like 80% of my subject from the name of my document. So that's not a tip that I can provide. Make sure you just name your physical documents as close to this subject that you want them to, to have. And then you have a nicely formatted subject. Nice. Okay. So uh, I can say something here like John, um, you know, attach, attach, please find the proposal we previously uh, discussed for the work you are about to contract with McCormick. Very simple. P.S. Right? Ken, <clears throat> please ignore this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good one. P.S. Uh, Kim, uh, please ignore as I am um, doing a video. <laughs> okay, so Kim will get this. It's probably still be confused, but anyway, it's no big deal. <laughs> the idea here is that um, you have up to 10,000 characters to enter something here. But again, you don't want this to be yet another document that you're writing. So I would just suggest <laughs> keep it concise, keep it simple and um, make sure that your recipient is well aware of what you're sending by that's a, that's a great tip. yeah by don't, being don't write a, don't write a document in your email body to get your document correct. signed no, correct sorry. don't yes. write a pastoral you don't need a pastoral <laughs> in there nice. <laughs> all right so i'm going to click on next year and now this is kind of the meats and potatoes of of really what you do because here now on the left on the right pane i'm sorry you have a an outline of the document, or you have a, I would say, a um, little, what do you call it, um, small view of the entire document. Yep. Right, and you yep. can go to specific pages or what's not. Uh, uh, the word I was looking for was vignette. So you have a vignette of each one of the pages, and there you, you can sort of circle through each one of them. Nice. All right. And as you can see, this is a, you know, very good looking proposal it has our logo up here was not and all the things that you have. So tells is proprietary and confidential on all these things. Yep. Now we have the uh, we like people to acknowledge the dates and times that we put here and who um, uh, is going to uh, acknowledge this. But since this is directed at you, the first thing I want to call your attention to is you can have several recipients here. If you change your mind, you can always edit the recipients and that's gonna send you back to that page that we had before where you set up your recipients mm -hmm. and then you can come back to this page if you want. Good to know. Okay. So the first thing is initials. So I want my folks to initial this first page. All right. In fact, I want them to initial every page of the proposal up until they get to the signature page. Okay. So the one thing we can do here is because initials are going to be on all pages. I can control C this to copy it, right? And then I can move down to every page and then I can paste that initial. So that's one of the first features I want to point out. You don't have to always drag from the standard field list, especially if you're going to drag the same field over and over. Yeah. You can, those repeatable fields, you can copy and paste them across the different pages. Nice. So, uh, you know, this is just for, demo purposes. So I'm just going to initial a few here, but I think you get the point yep. uh, of having to go through each one of the pages, setting up um, an initial on each one of those pages. One, well, I just want to call right? out, like, it's pretty nice because what I'm noticing is you copied it and pasted it, right? But it's, it's not only copying and pasting the initial field, it's actually right. putting it in the same spot. In the same spot. And that is key for, especially, you know, if this is going to go in front of your legal team, yeah. attorneys are pretty anal about that stuff, right? Yeah. So you will want to have um, fields being in the correct spot for signature purposes while you go through the whole thing. So, you know, that's, I'm not going to bore you going through all 15 pages, but I think, as I said, you get the point. Yep, totally. Okay. All right, so this page, you know, up to page, I uh, think um, uh, we'll get to that page right now. So here, this is my sign, sign off and acceptance page. Okay. Okay. So a couple things you can do is you can add um, 
if you don't know who the customer contact is or who is going to, you, you can add fields that, for example, your customer can fill out, right? So in this case, my customer is you. So I want you to fill out, for example, the text for who's the contact. That, and that helps me keep my CRM system updated yeah. so I can go back and tell my tell Kim to go to uh, to CRM and actually add that contact information or verify that we have the proper um, information for that person. Awesome. But what I want to know, what I want to point you to is over here, you can determine on your right pane for that specific field if that's going to be a required field or it's going to be a read-only field. And you can add text to sort of like... Um, pre-fill that field if I wanted to. Nice. Right? You can determine the formatting. You can actually add a tooltip. So if you want to provide a little help about that field um, to the recipient uh, or recipients, they know exactly uh, what that tooltip would be for, you know, for example, fill in uh, contact uh, name and last name or this. Uh, field and you can say this is optional right so if it's optional it means that it's not required right that the other thing to to distinguish is required fields will appear in the color of the signer nice all right so one thing i like is if you have more than one signer if i switch between signers then i will inherit another color Mm. And that those the fields, the list of fields or that I can add will have that color as well. So I can distinguish between different signers and different options for each signer. So um, that is that is actually something pretty cool that you can um, you can establish here. It's the now, little things, you know, it's the little things is the yeah. little things. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the little things. The other thing that you can do then is you can then add a. Um, like in this case, your name is prefixed. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to provide a the name of the signer, I could actually go ahead and assuming this document didn't have that field or, or that filled out, I can actually add your full name here. Okay, and I'm gonna draw it on this side, right? So yep. you can see what it looks like when you receive it. Cool. Um, actually, let me since I have this name on credit card, that would be the person who would be responsible, and that's you. There you uh, go. I'm just gonna move it down here. OK, and effectively, that is going to be required. So in other words, the proposal is going to be signed and paid by the person whose name appeared there. OK, and for the credit card expiration, we can always add um, your, um, you know, another text field here mm -hmm. that will allow me to fill out that information. And I'm going to also make this a little bigger. OK. Cool. So it fills it fills the bulk of what I want. Now, another thing to keep in mind here, like this is now the acceptance signature portion. This is where your signature will appear. So if I drag the signature field, that's where it will appear. Nice. Okay. Note that I drag it and I actually moved it slightly below the line. I will explain that in a second. All right. The other thing that you can do is if you have checkboxes on your on your uh, document, you can actually add those as well for your um, mm -hmm. your recipient to fill in. What I like though is this addition of this plus sign here, which then gives me consecutive uh, text boxes that I can add in a row. Then I can worry about moving them around, etc. Now, what is my personal recommendation? If you're gonna add fields like these and you have sort of templatized these fields, just don't add them on the actual physical document. Just drag them out from the pane, and mm -hmm. those will be uh, provided here as well. Nice. OK? So uh, it's the little things like those that you want to make sure that you are addressing. But you can also add radio buttons. You can also add drop downs with options. Uh, we can do an entire video about formulas, which I'm not going to even address right now. Um, you can add notes. You can add uh, room for attachments. Uh, you can add a decline option or approve option. So, you know, but we'll keep it basic. Cool. Again, the company, you could add the company information there as well. Um, person's title, 
things like those are predefined fields um, that that um, would be a part of a probably a more extensive document where you need you know a more complex workflow or even um, different people approving or rejecting options. So, yeah. um, but to keep it simple, this is typically what a document looks like that it's going to be submitted to a recipient. Yep. I find myself using these type of fields 80% of the time just because of the job that I do. But it's not unheard of that you can cycle through all these type of fields in a single document, depending yeah. again on the extent of the document that you are um, that you're trying to do. And I've seen DocuSign being used even to review, uh, for example, books. So if you're in the process of drafting a book and you have exchanges with um, with the reviewer, you know those things of approve, reject, those type of things wow. are very useful in that context as well. Very good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I really like about this platform is I can preview what you will see as a recipient, right? So note that I can see the viewing as, and in this case, I can see what you will see when you get this document. Nice. Okay. So I can walk through and I can then try an initial here. And as you can see, it sort of gives me a you know, a preview note on each one of those pages where you are. And I can, it tells me what type of object I'm trying to uh, fill. In this case, I need an initial here, an initial there. We'll get to that signature page so you can see what that looks like. So it's like a, my way of testing the document and the fields before you get it. And you have to call me to say, hey, Mariana, you know what? You messed up here. Please send me another copy, that kind totally. of stuff. Totally. Okay. I can test out the credit card field. Again, there's nothing sp special about this. So it's just a text field. I can sign it. Right. And it then moves me through the rest of the document as I go along. All right. Nice. Nice. So when I, when I'm done with this, I can close this out. Okay. And I can then send this to you. So that's my last step. Now, um, it says that uh, it's automatically sent me or sent to you yep. that uh, that document. And I want us before you get it, and uh, you know, I'll give you time to to check your inbox and see if you got it, mm -hmm. uh, what you see on your side. But before we go there, I want to walk through this. So this is my envelope. So I have uh, my inbox, my sent, my drafts, my deleted. These are all the different ones that we've sent in the past. Um, those that require immediate action, uh, waiting for others. And this is the one that I, the view that I, the quick view that I use the most, waiting for others. So that gives me an idea of where the document is. It tells me how many um, steps are left in this document to complete. Like in this case, I sent it out. So um, the next thing that is waiting for is for you to get, a, um, get uh, going with the actions that you need to complete so I can get back this document, okay? Cool. And then it tells me which ones are expiring soon, which ones are completed, uh, whether the authentication failed, et cetera. So very complete set of quick views that I encourage everybody to just look through. Uh, you can create your own folders, by the way. So if you want to archive things in a different way, like say you want to set up your retail customers versus your wholesale proposals versus your... Uh, services proposals, you know, you can always set up folders and catalog the documents once you've sent them. Nice. Then the last thing to show here is the different actions. I can move this. If I made a boo-boo, I can correct it. And corrected means I can go back and upload perhaps a new document if I need to. I can change the recipients, all these other things. I can nice. copy it. I can then save as a template. This is the part we talked about before. Yep. So if I have uh, a document that I send uh, progressively over time, this kind of the same layout, the same set of fields, you can templatize that. So the next time you you come to this, you can apply that template, and then you can all, all you have to do is go through, make sure everything is in the right spot, and boom, good to go. Right. If uh, if we're not comfortable with what we sent out, we or, or you you and I have a disagreement, I can void this document. 
resend a new one or simply completely ignore you altogether going forward and, <laughs> and not do anything about it. And I can also see the history. And this is actually one that I like a lot because then it shows me the details, the envelope ID, the date it was sent, the current status, the date created. And I can see sort of like the progression of things that happen with this with this particular document. Yeah. More importantly, I can download the certificate for the document for the envelope that I sent. So that certificate is kind of like my uh, DocuSign uh, stamp of you know authenticity, of, authenticity yeah. uh, of of, uh, of what I just completed. Because nice. in the in the world of electronic documents. It is important to have something that says, yep, this is effectively something that went through our platform and we yeah. authenticate that all the steps that were completed are the steps that you're seeing okay. there. And I can always bring this into a court if I have to, you know, not that you and I are going to a court or something like that, but you know what I mean. Yep, absolutely. Okay? Cool. All right. Did you get that document, John? I did. As soon as you hit the button, it hit my inbox, actually. It's, awesome. It is there. All right. I'm going to switch over here. And uh, let's check it out. So here it is. We can see on the right side, I have this full view. Mariano sent me a document to review, attached, find the proposal, yep. and then our PS to Kim to not pay attention, right? <laughs> let's go ahead and hit review. Now look, you go back right to your cloud environment. So yep. you, you so, don't have to really have any software loaded on your machine or anything like that. Exactly. So first thing is, it always asks to know your location. Now, one thing is DocuSign is very trustworthy. They do not mishandle your data. Letting them know this stuff is fine. It's not going to get abused. So I always allow where, so that they can see my location. So that way, if it helps in the signing process and saves me a couple of clicks, then I definitely do that. Uh, also, you want to first click right here to agree that you are going to be fine with using with using electronic signature. And so you do that and you hit continue. And now it enables the document so that you can actually start going through it. And so you can do this one of two ways. I can either click start, which will kind of drop me down to my first mm -hmm. action, or I could just go ahead and click. And then the that meter will actually start moving itself down as I take those sets of actions, right? So I'll go yeah. ahead and click through them all. I've in real life, I would have read this all before clicking them. Always <laughs> read your contracts, people. <laughs> Um, and so here's my optional field, right? We'll put uh, who, who's in charge of my money. Well, I guess we'll we'll put Alicia. Uh, and then down here, the credit card number, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, expiration, nine, uh, 2099. And then I will sign. And then we go ahead through to the rest of our site. Um, Gosh, yep. what are those initials? Thank you. Um, yep. And then we hit finish. And so a couple cool things here. So one is that I want to point out is this. It offers you the option to log in so that you can keep a copy of whatever it is you just signed. I always, always, always recommend that you do this. I'm going to click log in. I'm going to go ahead and and confirm my password here, sign into my DocuSign account, and then you're going to see automatically it dropped it into my folder of completed items. And so we can yep. go over to completed and you can see Fabricam here along with some of the other things I've done. And so I would say always make sure that you click that button to log in and keep a copy because everything you sign, you wanna have a copy of, it's important stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's, uh, that's um, a very important thing. Now, the other thing that um, you wanna do if, uh, you can just transfer over back to my You're screen. On. You're uh, I'm on. Okay, good. So I am on the completed side here as well. And as I can, as you can see, right here it tells me that you completed the the uh, document. Yep. So now I can go back and inquire this document in more detail. I can cycle again through the different pages uh, or pages of this proposal. I can download a copy for myself again. We are in an environmentally conscious environment, so we don't download these documents and print them out if we don't need to. But you can download them and have it uh, stored in a vault or something that um, that is uh, appropriate for electronic documents that are signed. Maybe you have a, maybe you need to load it in your CRM environment, and, and you don't have a direct connection like we do with Dynamics 365 um, between DocuSign and Dynamics 365. 
So um, you can manage this uh, however you want at the end of this um, of the signing cycle. The other things that you can do is you can um, make it or, or look at the history. So again, one of my favorite views where I can see what went on and, um, and you know, it tells me that a printable copy was attached in this case to the email. Uh, you know, it sort of like walks me through all the different options that I had. When it got here, Kim got a printable copy as well. She would probably be scratching her head, but you know, hopefully she read the PS of the document. So we're good there. Yeah. The other thing here is um, I can choose to move this at the end. And then I have, these are the folders that I have set up and I can, like we have one for manually completed documents. So we just move those that were manually completed there. But again, you can set up any type of folder structure you want. You can set up one on the fly if you need to. And that pretty much um, is a summary of what you would do. Now, I wanted to quick click here on templates because I do have a template set up. So um, if I look at, uh, you know, my customization proposal template, that's something that we have. I can use that against a document. I would, didn't want to finish this uh, this presentation without walking through that because I know we talked about it a couple of times. So, uh, John, I mean, this is it, brother. 101. Love um, it. Awesome. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a really solid platform for document um, document uh, signatures and, and certainly working through um, electronic documents. Uh, you can, you know, with a little bit of uh, work, like uh, I know you had Yash a couple of weeks ago on, on your show. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Yash shows all the crazy stuff you can do with Power Automate and DocuSign. So that, that should give you an idea of, uh, you know, building more sophisticated workflows with the product. So yeah. an API. So that's uh, super awesome. I, I really like as a customer, I'm speaking now as a customer, I really like how we can optimize um, our, you know, our interactions with our with our own customers and simplify uh, the turnaround of documents that used to, you know, travel via email and then three or four people end up with different copies and then we don't know who who was really responsible for signing anything and you know yeah. it kind of gets complicated from there on. Yeah. So I really like this as a customer. Awesome. Well, man. Mariano, let me just say huge thanks to you for coming on as a customer and taking time to show others how to get started with DocuSign, how to get your signatures in, how to work with a document, how to check out the history, how to do the signing order. I think it's an awesome wealth of information for anyone who's just checking out the platform. So huge thanks to you for coming and doing this, man. Thanks, John. Uh, respect. Love respect, you, brother. Bro. All right, you guys know what to do. First things first, go check the description. We'll have a bunch of links for Mariano down there. Check out his Twitter, connect with him on LinkedIn. He's got a YouTube channel. Go and connect with him in all the ways so that you can make sure to check out all the goodness from him. And then otherwise, hit that like button. Go ahead and get subscribed so that you don't miss another video. And that's it. That's it from me. Much love. I'll see you Much in the love. next one. Take care.